I think this video has been a long time coming because out of all of the questions and comments I get, amongst the most frequent ones are questions about signal providing services. People asking whether I've used them in the past, whether I would use them, if there's any that I trust, which ones are the best ones, whether I'd provide one and so on and so on. So I thought finally I'd do a video to address the topic and that way in the future I can direct people towards this video and also for those of you that are on the fence about whether you'd like to jump into a signal providing service or not, hopefully this clarifies a few things for you and helps you to make up your mind. So quick disclaimer before we start, I have never used signal providing services. I have never offered a signal providing service. I don't intend to at any point in the future. So therefore you can take my opinion with a pinch of salt because I've never been directly involved in them one way or another. However, what I do have are strong opinions about it. And there's a reason that I've never been involved in them before. But I don't just want to give you my viewpoint only. I want to give it a bit of balance. So to start off with, we'll go through some of the benefits, the reasons why someone may start a signal providing service in the first place and why some of them may be legitimate before we move on to what my thoughts are. I'm sure you can guess what direction that's going to go in. OK, it was a little bit too windy and loud out there. So we've come in here instead. So what are the reasons that someone may have who is genuinely a consistently profitable trader to start a signal providing service? You know, a lot of people would say, if someone's that good at trading, if they're consistently profitable, then why do they need to provide any service? Surely if they're that good, they could just trade their own accounts and make their money that way. Well, I don't actually agree with that point of view. I think it's a little bit short-sighted to say something like that. Because for example, if you're consistently profitable, doesn't necessarily mean that you have a huge amount of starting capital. Of course, you could accumulate it over time and build up a bigger amount of capital that you could trade with, but some people just wanna speed up the process. Maybe they've been consistently profitable for a number of years and they want to go full time, but they don't have the capital they need to do it. So they're going to offer some sort of service that uses their talents or their abilities to build up that capital and provide a service for someone else. So for example, for many decades, people have provided services who are great investors and great traders, including fund managers, not all of them are great, research papers, people that are releasing white papers on the research they're doing, uh, investor letters, signal providing services maybe in some cases. Not all of these people are people that can't trade themselves, so they're offering a service to someone, it's just that there are other reasons involved. So the first reason, like I said, may be that they're trying to build up more capital. It may be that this is a way for them to access capital that they would never have access to otherwise, like fund managers who sometimes have millions or billions of dollars in assets under management. With that one in mind, it may also be as well that these people prefer to trade not just with their own money at risk, but also allowing other people to take the risk. So they can profit without having something at risk all the time. Relatively speaking, they still have reputational risk. And talking of reputation, it may also be that they're trying to build a name for themselves. Some people just like to feel important that they want to provide these sorts of services, maybe to show off what they can do, maybe to get involved in the right circles, maybe to build a name so they can use this as a stepping stone to offer other services or other products in the future that's more in line with what they want to do. They may want to build a team, they may want to use it as experience. There are so many reasons why someone may want to offer some sort of service connected with trading. So with all of that in mind, there are genuine reasons why someone may want to offer a signal providing service if they are as good as they say they are. Unfortunately, when you look at the majority of signal providing services out there, and I reckon most of them these days seem to be appearing on Instagram, they're not ticking any of the boxes of what we've just discussed or any of the other benefits that seem logical and fair enough. Instead, you find people who are showing off their fancy lifestyles with fast cars, holidays, private jets. And the first thing that comes to mind here for me is that if I wanted to trust my money with someone who's going to apparently make me a lot of profit and they're making a lot of profit, and I want to be sure that I'm not going to lose a significant amount of money, then I want to know that that person is sitting in an office, really focusing on their trading, sat behind the charts. I don't want to see someone in their early 20s sitting on a beach trading on their mobile. That's just defying the logic, even if it works for them. Even if trading on their mobile and trading on a private jet works for them, I want to make sure that you know I'm being secure with my money and that that person is fully focusing on what they're doing, not half-assed. So let's move on to the second point. 
Let's say for argument's sake that these signal providers are in the category of traders that I mentioned before who are consistently profitable, they're very good at what they do, but they just don't have enough starting capital to make it a viable thing for them full time. Well, if that's the case, then why are these people trying to sell their service by showing this luxury lifestyle that they live from their trading? They're saying, my trading allowed me the freedom to live life on my own terms, now you can do it too. Well, if that's the case, then they're not looking to do this for the extra side income. So what are they doing it for? Because let me tell you, as someone that has managed money on behalf of other people in the past, it's extremely stressful and it changes the way you trade a lot of the time. You could have great performance, but as soon as your results are being scrutinized and people are questioning your every decision, then your results can sort of go downhill or at least you start second guessing yourself. It's sometimes not worth the stress. Unless of course you're getting a huge amount of money risk-free like the fund managers who have hundreds of millions or billions in assets under management, which these guys aren't. They're having hundreds, maybe thousands of individual clients who all have a small amount of money, which means a lot to them. So that means extra stress, extra pressure. So are they doing it because they want to provide something back? They want to give back to the community? Well, no, because they're promising this get rich quick lifestyle, which everyone who's been involved in trading for any amount of time practically knows is not really the case. It's not something that's going to happen. And it's actually going to lead more people to burning through their account, to having unrealistic expectations of what can happen and not putting in the work for themselves. So they're not really looking after the community either. How about building a name for themselves? Well, considering when you look on Instagram, the adverts that appear in your feed, most of the most popular accounts, they're actually hiding behind a company name, usually ending in the letters FX for some reason, as if that signifies that they are important, uh, and they're not giving their full name. So they're not building a name for themselves, so they're obviously not doing it for reputation in either. So are they trying to build a team? Maybe, but it doesn't seem to be the focus of anything they discuss. Are they trying to use it as a stepping stone into bigger and better things? Maybe, but once again, they seem to be keen on this signal providing service and just traveling the world and enjoying their life. So what is it that they're doing this for? I would say that they're essentially these young guys in most cases, not in all cases, but mostly young guys who have realized there's this opportunity because it's becoming a bit of a bubble, especially on Instagram and other social media. So everyone's aware of it now. They're realizing if I put enough money into advertising and show enough lavish things and just give the bare minimum that someone needs to know, then I can make money. So they're knowingly ripping people off because they know that they can't trade. Now, this is obviously just my opinion and it's turning a little bit ranty, but I would like to say that I'm sure there are good people out there with good intentions that are actually good at what they do and have good performance. But the problem is the market is so saturated right now that you'll find it so difficult to find them in amongst all the people that don't know what they're doing. And if you do find them, I don't think you can trust that you've really got the real deal there because of all the others that are out there. And I'm sure whoever's watching this, if someone is providing a signal providing service and they are actually good at what they do, they'd probably agree with me on that, that the market's saturated with a load of nonsense. So with all of this in mind, this then begs the question, if they don't know what they're doing with their trading, they're obviously not getting good results, then how can they still get away with what they're doing? Why aren't there more people complaining? Why aren't there more people saying they're providing a bad service? Why aren't they losing followers? Why are they still continuing to make money from it? And this is all down to how they operate. So the first thing, the easy answer, is that they're so short-term focused, they don't care if they're cannibalizing their own market. What I mean by this is that if someone has a negative experience with them, they have negative results, they don't care. That person can go bye-bye because they'll just advertise and get 10 more people that will take their place. You know, it can't go on forever. Like I said, it's a bit of a bubble right now, but for the time being, they're making money. They don't worry about that. The next thing is something that people have actually told me who have gone through this, which is that when you do get negative performance and you maybe leave a comment or complain to them, they won't address it. They'll just delete your comment and block you. So in their comment sections, it's always going to be good feedback. It's going to be people saying, all I've had is winning trade so far. I'm so glad I joined this service. This is going to change my life. And then you might ask, well, if people are leaving those good comments, surely some people are having good experiences. And yes, they are. And that's for one of two reasons, one of two approaches they can take. The first one is how they structure their trades. 
they're going to have them asymmetric but negative asymmetric. In other words, you are risking more than you can potentially gain. So they'll tell you to enter a trade and the take profit will be closer to the entry point than the stop loss. And I've heard from people that have followed these signal providing services that sometimes this can be 10 times as much, as in you're set to lose 10 times as much as you can gain. But obviously that means because it's so far away compared to the take profit, that there's more chance for the take profit being hit which means that people can go on a winning streak for a very long time and think they're getting a great service until eventually, bang, they crash and uh, their stop loss gets hit and they lose all of the profit that they made before. But until that point, if these people don't know about trading, which are the people that these companies are targeting or these individuals are targeting, people that don't know anything about trading but they keep hearing about everyone else making money, then these people are going to see a winning streak to start with, they're gonna tell their friends and family, everyone's going to get involved and word of mouth spreads and these companies grow and grow and grow. And as soon as people have negative performance, they'll either blame that person and say you must have done something wrong or just kick him out. So that's one way. And the next way that they can overcome it is a way that I've explained before in videos. And I'm just gonna play you a clip from a video we did about probability that explains the approach that they can take. I'm going to explain a very typical scam that people have used for decades with trading tips and signal providing services. So the scammer contacts a large group of people. Let's say it's 10,000 individuals. They tell them they're an expert and they're going to give them some signals about when to buy or sell certain assets. However, the scammer has split this group. The group is split 50-50 and half the group gets told to buy gold and half the group gets told to sell gold. Now if gold rises in value, the scammer will ignore the half of the group that lost and focus on that winning half of the group. This group is once again split, two groups. Now there's 2,500 in each of these groups. The scammer tells one of the groups to buy oil and the other group to sell oil. Now if oil goes down in value, one group has now had two good trades in a row, whereas the other group has had one loss. The scammer will focus on the winning group, the one that's had two wins in a row. This process will go on and on until a small group is left which has had a string of impressively profitable trades. At this point, the scammer will request that they fork over a huge amount of money to continue with that service. Without realizing these poor people have survivorship bias. On the other hand, the scammer realizes that most of the people in this entire process lost at some point. And you know, it's so disappointing because even when you know just a little bit about trading, you can already start to tell who maybe knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. And one of these companies kept appearing in my timeline on Instagram as a sponsored post. So I clicked and I looked at what they had and their profile was all lavish stuff stuff that they're claiming they got from trading. And then in their bio, they had a link to a YouTube video they had just made. And I watched it and I could not believe that they could barely explain what Forex actually is, let alone being able to trade it. The person had no confidence in what they were talking about. They weren't even explaining it right. I really think that it's only a matter of time before regulators really clamp down on this sort of thing, or at least the platforms stop allowing people to advertise that are offering these sort of services. They've done it for things like binary options, some cryptocurrency related things. I think they could do it for signal providing services as well. You know, if the regulators suddenly said that you have to provide evidence or go through some sort of due diligence, some sort of regulation process to be able to offer these services, the same for educators, the same for everything else. I think that would be so much better if people actually, actually had to show something to sort of tick the boxes and get accreditation of some sort. But until then, these sort of companies are still going to survive, they're still going to thrive, they're still going to advertise to you on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and wherever else, but you've just got to be careful about who you're trusting. And like I said at the start, I'm sure there are people out there that are offering genuine good services that have good performance, whether it's signals or something else, and I don't want to tar everyone with the same brush, but I do have to say, it's so difficult to know who you can trust and who you can't, and which ones fall into the category of being good at what they do and which ones aren't. If you like this video though, please do hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And since we've spoken so much about Instagram, if you're not already following us on Instagram, I would really appreciate it if you went, either click the link in the description box or go on Instagram and find at Duomo Initiative. We have lots of posts and lessons in the captions of the post. We're also starting stories now, so check it out and you might pick up a few bits and pieces that help you with your trading. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.